Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Tonight I'm going to show the processing workflow that I used on the Tiger Eye Galaxy. And for me, this is uh, my first target for Galaxy Season uh, 2024. I actually started grabbing some subs on this uh, late December. And um, let me show you where it's at over here. So it's a very bright galaxy. And uh, here it is. Uh, it's near some other popular targets. Uh, let's see. There's Bodes and Cigars right over there. And if we advance the time here a bit. Right, so it's available before other popular targets like Whirlpool, Sunflower, Crocs Eye, Pinwheel. And so, yeah, first, uh, first target for for me for Galaxy C this time around. All right, and so you can see here, this is the uh, stacked uh, shot of the Tiger Eye Galaxy. I'm using the Celestron Edge HD 8, so that eight inch SCT, along with the um, ZWO ASI 533MC. Now, I think for this year's Galaxy season, I'm going to keep the 533MC on the edge and go after a lot of these popular targets. Uh, I've been doing astrophotography for more than a few years, and surprisingly, I haven't grabbed a lot of these uh, common targets. I did hit Whirlpool years ago, and of course, M81 and M82 I've taken pictures of, uh, but all the other targets out in that kind of area, I've not really imaged especially with the 8-inch edge. So I've never shot Tiger Eye before. Uh, I think the next one I'm going after is the Sunflower. A lot of those galaxies don't have a whole lot of HA, and so I think going with the one-shot color and the edge is just going to be a nice, uh, easy way to hit a bunch of those targets this year. So here we go, 17 hours on Tiger Eye. And let's go through the history that I use. So right off the bat, I did a mild crop. That was just to take care of these stacking artifacts along the edges. Um, and then it looks like I did a, oh, I think I just renamed it. <laughs> uh, to get rid of the ridiculously long names that uh, Pix and Sight uh, gives us. Then I rotated. Uh, this orientation just was more pleasing for me to look at while processing. All right, this I want to say is Blur Exterminator Correct Only. Let's see. Yep. So what the Correct Only does is it only corrects the star shapes. Uh, yeah, you can see in this corner in particular the stars are elongated. I've got a tiny bit of tilt in this system and Star Exterminator clean, excuse me, Blur Exterminator cleans that up really well. Now if you see this, there is definitely a light pollution gradient here, but it's not too bad. And uh, what I'm finding is that at longer focal lengths, with especially with a small sensor like the 533, uh, you're not impacted by uh, light pollution gradients quite as bad as you are with the wide field stuff. So that's one one nice thing here. Uh, but I went ahead and ran dynamic background extraction and that's what you're seeing here. So now we have a nice even background. And I believe next was Blur Exterminator again, maybe. Yeah, oh no, nope. Uh, color correction was next. So that's what you're seeing here is a preview to get the uh, background sample. And there, that's what the color correction applied. Now this doesn't look right, but that's because I'm using uh, a, a a linked auto stretch. So let's go to, um, let's refresh that. And there we go. So that's looking pretty good. Now I should say in regards to color, I was getting a little nervous while processing this uh, galaxy because there wasn't a whole lot of color to pull out. And I was getting concerned that maybe I was doing something wrong. But a little bit of research in this galaxy uh, really gave the answer. So there's there's almost no star formation taking place here. What I read is that there were a bunch of blue stars uh, earlier on this galaxy's um, lifespan that basically blew away, <laughs> dispersed 
all of the uh, uh, all of the gas that you normally would use to produce new stars. So that's why you're not seeing uh, a lot of HA regions in here. And so most of the and the blue stars, of course, don't last as long. They burn out relatively quickly uh, as far as star lifespans go. So the galaxy is full of mostly older stars and uh, yeah you're not going to get a whole lot of color we're just seeing the color of these older stars and um, so that would explain the lack of color all right next I believe should be blur exterminator yep there it is blur exterminator by RC Astro is just amazing now for those that are not familiar it's basically AI trained deconvolution so instead of having to run deconvolution manually and using a whole ton of trial and error to try to get a good balance with the stars and the details in your galaxies, Blur Exterminator is basically doing it in one click. And just a little shameless plug for myself, I do have an affiliate link for all the Astro, RC Astro software, including Blur Exterminator. So if you were to click on that link and start your trial, if you do purchase it, I would get a small commission on that. Alrighty, so let's see. Next, uh, pull the stars out. There's our stars. Uh, and now here we have color. And yeah, I just renamed that. So what I decided to do is process this galaxy. I think this might be at least for the next little while until I figure out a better way to do it. Uh, is to process these galaxy shots with this uh, one-shot color camera by separating the luminance from the color and then almost treating it like mono. What I find is that if I just proceed with the color image you start to get like some color artifacts and some uh, a kind of a modeled look, moded look and um, running, it, running it separately with the luminance uh, just seems to give me better results. So let's see. <clears throat> yeah, so there's there's the luminance right there. And let's see. I think this is the one that I did the work on. Actually, uh you see this? I thought I had this. Oh, here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what you can see here is that there are some artifacts. If you've been watching my videos, especially the last couple of gal galaxy shots, you know what I've been doing here is I'm using Clone Stamp to clean up uh, these artifacts. These artifacts are left over from uh, removing the stars. So, it's where all the brightest stars are in the shot and the reason why I remove these is because when I add the stars back in the stars are usually smaller because I'm keeping the stars tight and if I don't remove these then it's like you these 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 uh, fuzzy patches kind of show through and um, it doesn't look good it gives the image a soft look overall now one interesting thing uh, with this target really quick I think there's some IFN in there because if I look closely there's definitely some structure on this I didn't there's no clone stamp usage over here or anything like that and so I think there is some IFN here but this system with the uh, one shot color camera on an 8 inch SCT in a Bortle 5 I don't think is is gonna do a good job pulling that out but anyone that's watching this that maybe has a bigger scope or a faster scope in darker skies uh, might be worth spending some time here and seeing if you can pull out some luminance. Because when I was doing my research on this target, I didn't see any, any IFN on any of these shots. But surprisingly, this really isn't that popular of a target. So it uh, might be worth a shot. All right, uh, let's see what's next. All right, so you can see that I stretched it here. Oops. Let me uh, remove the stretch. There we go. So for stretching, I use GHS. Uh, that's Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. Uh, I'm starting to get the hang of it. I think I needed to watch 
Adam Block's video on it a couple of times, a couple more times to really get the hang of it. And I think I'm actually starting to feel comfortable with the with the tool now. And then pretty much the same deal with the color. Let's see. Okay, so what you have here, this is after doing the stretch on the color data, which it actually doesn't look too bad here. Uh, so next is to uh, smooth this out, denoise it, because we don't want any of this color noise, even though there really isn't that much this time around. Uh, but we want to eliminate any of this color noise, and the best way to do this is to just apply maximum noise reduction. So I use Noise Exterminator here, which is another good program, does a great job of taking all that noise out. And then next, I use the LRGB combination tool to add the luminance. And so that's what we have here. Now, I mean, this is really, to be honest, this was pretty much an easy, straightforward, hassle-free target. Uh, so I really just did a bunch of curves work here. Um, increasing saturation. You can see I'm playing around with background darkness again. <laughs> always trying to decide how how dark I want the background um, I tend to like some some background signal I don't want it to be uh, you know look like it's clipped at the burp, the background but it seems like the really super contrasty images are the are the popular ones so you know trying to find a balance there all right so from here I did take it into Photoshop and uh, and then some more curves work, I guess, a little bit here. But mostly in Photoshop, I'm using the camera raw filter and the uh, hue saturation tool. And this is pretty much where I ended up. This blue spot here, that is uh, artifact from a star. And I didn't want to mess around with clone stamp. Uh, this was just too close to the galaxy to do anything about it. But other than that, I think the galaxy is looking pretty decent here. Uh, so then it was playing with the stars. I did a couple of different things with the stars. Like, I thought this was pretty good, uh, but you can still see a strong halo around this one. Uh, so I decided to work on the halo a little bit. That's right here. Still got the halo. Uh, and I think I want to pull a little bit more of the background stars out. And this here is the final image. So you can see the halo around that bright star is still there, but it's, it's uh, de-emphasized quite a bit now. And it doesn't, it doesn't take away from the galaxy at all. There's that nasty star there. Got a really cool looking galaxy down here. I wonder how far away this galaxy is. Anyone know what galaxy this is? Uh, if I had to guess, I would say this is two to four hundred million light years away. Just, just eyeballing it, knowing how far these galaxies that look about this size are typically in my pictures. All right, so quick and easy, Tiger's uh, Tiger Eye Galaxy. Um, Drop a comment in the uh, comment section down there and let me know if you've shot this target before or if it's after seeing this video, if it's one that maybe you'll put on your list. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And uh, everyone have a good evening. Clear skies.